So it's been a while since I did a video. Um, now we've just finished this 1991 Range Rover Classic um, and it's delivery, what, in a couple of days time. Um, so I thought we'd do a quick, show you how it all works inside, quick test drive, and then I'll walk around outside, show you the fun bits underneath the bonnet, the motor, etc., things like that. So to start off, it literally is the original key goes into the original hole and you'll see it all come into life in a minute. So a turn there, you see the gauges do their fancy thing. We've got battery level on the left, which is showing what 40 odd percent. And then on the right, we've got speed. Um, you can see the handbrakes on this middle panel is original. So that's showing your indicators, your full beams, etc. Um, other than that, in here, I've got full power steering. As you can see, that's just come to life. Makes life a little bit easier. Obviously, they're big, fat tires, and it's a very heavy Range Rover, so you definitely need that. Um, in here, you won't be able to see it, but there's a stop charge button. That is so that when you plug the car in at any charger, be a DC rapid charger or a slow charger, it actually locks the charger in there. So that button releases it so that somebody can't just unplug your car. Um, other than that, in here, we've got the heater controls. Um, so that's all looks original, but actually behind it's not original. So this turns on the heater, um, which is a high voltage heater element and also the, blow the original blower fan. So it all comes through the original vents to your feet, to your windscreen, whatever you want that to be. Also in here, we've got, well, down here, the very old radio. Obviously that's getting changed, but that's not our job. That'll be somebody else's. And we've got the drive selector. So neutral drive and reverse. Now the keen eye amongst you will realize that this is a Range Rover with cup holders. Um, now that is not very common <laughs> on a Range Rover Classic. They basically didn't have any cup holders, which I think is ridiculous because the number in the new Range Rovers is just ridiculous. You could have as many cup holders as you want. Um, so without further ado, I've got my foot on the brake, which allows me to engage reverse, let the handbrake off, and you'll see that this Range Rover moves silently, which is pretty weird for people who sort of drive past or walk past. Um, but off we go. Now it's a super cold day today. It's beginning of January. Um, so it's a bit different than being in our usual Defenders, which are what, Series 2s, 3s, and Defenders. We're actually in full comfort here. There's no rattles, there's no wind coming in, there's no hair flapping around or whatever. This is a proper 90s luxury car, and it very much still feels like it. Um, although, when I put my foot down, she, um, she moves a little bit better than she used to when it was a 2.5 litre diesel, non, I think non-turbo, I can't even remember, um, but it was rubbish. So now it's a really drivable, really comfortable Range Rover that is uh, eco-friendly and electric and free to run and there's no ULEZ charge and there's no tax on it or anything like that, which is all uh, a lot of benefits for this car specifically because it lives inside the M25 so this client's pretty happy with his investment now, especially since the, since the uh, expansion of the ULA zone. So let's go for a little bit of a spin and then we'll park up uh, where we actually want to do some photos in a minute and I'll give you a quick look around to see, you know, the underneath, the important bit, the, the bit you actually care about. But for now, I'll enjoy driving around the country lanes. Um, oh, one last thing to note, to, to mention while I've got you here, is that I haven't actually touched the brake pedal yet when driving, which is very strange, but it's all a regen. So if I come completely off the throttle now, I'm doing 20 mile an hour, I'm completely off throttle, no brakes, and we are now, now going on the brakes to stop. So that shows you the level of regen in this car. You don't have to have it that high. You can choose the various levels of regen. I like it really high. Um, so. That's a nice little one pedal driving part of this car. Um, but right, I will pick this back up when we are over in the place where I want to take the pictures. So 
So, we've pulled up. It's a bit cold and windy, so excuse us. We're not professional video makers. Where's the latch? Here it is. Under the bonnet, you can see it's a little bit different than the diesel that used to be in there. We've got a beautiful gray battery box there. That's the entire battery pack. That's 55 kilowatt hours, which takes this thing more than 150 miles, actually, because it's actually a lot more aerodynamic than the, than the Land Rover Defenders. It's got skinnier tires. It's got road tires. It's, we've got very good range out of this box. Um, it fast charges, so you can do a 25 to 35 minute rapid charge, um, which gets you from 20 to 80 percent basically very quickly, which makes a lot of sense if you're doing a longer than 100 and something miles journey. Uh, not that you would very often and not that this car will either because it's built for Clapham ultimately. Um, also in the front here, you've got a full custom radiator pack. You've got two coolant header tanks. You've got one radiator going to the motor, one radiator going to the battery. Not so much for when it's discharging, but more for when it's rapid charging. The batteries will get hot because they're just sucking, I don't know, 150, 200 amps of power which generates heat um also in here you've got the dc dc you know what that is by now if you've watched my videos you've got power steering a 12v power steering pump as well as a brake vacuum pump which goes onto the original brake servo um, so a couple of simple things that are actually often overlooked during conversion so that's pretty nice and simple obviously you've got loads of space in the range rover engine bay which is lovely um, Ultimately, we're not restorers. There's still dodgy paint. There's still dirty washer fluid. We're not replacing all of that stuff for you. We're not doing headlights, we're not doing lights. Your restorers will do that. We do solely the electrification, um, which is why we can churn one of these out in a couple of months rather than more than a year, which, which would be including the restoration, the resplay, the blah, blah, blah. Um, other than that, she's running the original 12 volt battery. So everything 12 volt is original, wipers, blah, 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 is all original. Um, but underneath where we can't see and where I will quickly show you back in the workshop is the Tesla motor. Um, Model 3 motor turns sideways, goes to the front diff and the rear diff, gives 280 horsepower. It's re-geared, new bearings, new oil. LSD is even in there um, and that just makes really nice power delivery without having to have a gearbox or anything like that but crucially leaves us a lot of space up the front for batteries because the motor is in the gearbox tunnel basically um, so that's that i've had enough it's a bit cold um, but we're going to get a whole load of information about this car up on the website as long as a whole as well as a whole load of pictures that we've just taken um, so there she is it's a really nice one and we have got a two-door currently in the workshop which is getting exactly the same treatment, so we'll do a full video on that as well. But for now, see you back in the workshop and we'll quickly show you the motor. Right. Off we go. Right, we're back in the workshop now, and as promised, here's the underneath. Um, we'll start with the main event, which is the motor, Tesla Model 3. For that to be 280, nearly 300 horsepower, um, and only be sort of that big, and I think it's 65, 70 kilos, um, it's pretty amazing really, shows you what electrics are. Um, it goes where the massive gearbox used to be and is pushing power out down that, different, uh, down that prop shaft to the rear dips, which as you can see are original and covered in many years of wax oil, etc. And it's also pushing power down the front prop shafts down into the front diff, um, which is also original. So, it's not like we're blowing up differentials and half shafts, etc. Yes, there's a lot of power, but these cars were built very strong that they can deal with it. Um, other than that, as far as we're concerned, there's some big new mountings and cross members. All these mountings go through original chassis holes so we don't drill any holes in anything. 
Um, so really the whole process is removable. Um, these are all laser cut by Toby in the other room. Anything basically shiny black is us. Um, down to the bottom of the battery box, which is here. Um, now that's obviously quite a heavy lump of batteries there. So very, very thick steel. It's not moving an inch. Um, but other than that, she's original. So thank you very much for watching. Um, obviously put any comments if you have any questions, etc. My mobile is all over the website. Our pricing is all over the website. We can do this in kit form. You can bring your car to us. We can help you buy a car. Um, this is a four door. This car only actually cost the client, I think, eight grand. Whereas that one, which is a two door, which we'll have a video on later, costs a little bit more than eight grand. So we'll see you next time for probably that video and then everything else in the workshop, which we'll keep a secret for now. Thanks for watching.